Example 4, interception type of question. A lifeboat has a maximum speed of 60 km per hour, is 40 km due east of a fishing boat. Okay, so first of all, try to visualize how it looks like. You have a fishing boat somewhere here. Due to the east of the fishing boat, that means to the right of the fishing boat, there's a lifeboat. Okay, and they are 40 km apart. Alright, so this is what the first line is trying to tell us here. The fishing boat is sailing at 18 km per hour on a bearing of 230 degrees. So, okay, from here we draw a north, and 230 degrees will look a little bit like this, isn't it? Okay, so this will be our fishing boat, 230 degrees in bearing. Okay, uh, we will label it F, sorry, VF. I mean, okay, so uh, VF is traveling at 18 km per hour. Okay, put that down as well. And what happens next? Find the bearing on which the lifeboat must travel in order to intercept the fishing boat as quickly as possible. So you have a lifeboat here. You know that the fishing boat is moving this way. So you are the lifeboat. You want to intercept the fishing boat. Now, which way do you think it must go? Well, obviously, you must go somewhere in this direction, isn't it? So that you can intercept your fishing boat. Okay, so let me just extend so that they meet. Ah, okay, now it looks great. Okay, so this will be the path that your lifeboat has to take. Okay, so this will be labeled, of course, as VL. Okay, uh, do we know the speed? Yes, we do. Well, 60 kilometers per hour, isn't it? Alright, now this type of interception type of question is in fact very easy. Okay, there's no need for relative velocity at all. Well, of course, you can add it in if you want to, of which uh, we'll actually touch on more in Lesson 3. Okay, but uh, actually, what we can do is we can still solve the same, this question, and get the right answer, okay, by thinking simple. Okay, it's a very simple thinking type of question, really. Okay, you have a, f uh, a fishing boat here, and you know the fishing boat is moving this way, a lifeboat is so far apart. Well, to catch up with the fishing boat, the lifeboat will have to travel in a distance, some, uh, I mean, the bearing of something like this. Okay, you have the speed, you have the speed. So, what are we looking for, really? We're looking for the bearing that the lifeboat have to take, right? So, okay, so this will be the bearing that the lifeboat will have to take. Okay, so this is what we are ultimately looking for. Alright, so we'll call this angle theta. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Now, uh -huh. now we're stuck, isn't it? Okay, good. How are we going to solve for theta? Now, same as what we have seen so far, okay, we need an angle inside the triangle. Okay, and more often than not, the angle always, the angle will always be provided by the bearing. So we know that the bearing that the fishing boat is moving is at the 300 and, sorry, 230 degrees. So if this is 230 degrees, well, this has to be 90 degrees, isn't it? Because this is due north and this is due east. And therefore, this is 90 degrees. So 230 degrees minus 90 degrees, that will give us 140 degrees here. This angle here, 140 degrees. So again now, uh, well, we can solve for almost everything already, isn't it? Because we have an angle inside the triangle and here we go. We can go on from here. Okay, what are we really looking for? Well, we're looking for theta, isn't it? So, then you may ask, okay, how am I going to find theta? I mean, yeah, I know this, I know this, and I know this, but it doesn't help me find theta, isn't it? Okay, well, the fact of the matter is that you can't get theta directly, and therefore you have to try to get something, uh, no, this angle here. So we call this angle alpha, Okay, now why? Because the moment you know alpha and you know that this is 90 degrees as well, so we would know that, well, 360 degrees minus way 90 degrees minus way alpha, that will give us our theta, which is what we need. Okay, so now the focus should be on how are we going to find this angle alpha, isn't it? Well, then we look around the picture we have. Okay, of course we always look for sine rule or cosine rule. Okay, because it's not a right angle triangle, so that's the only thing we can do, isn't it? So this is 140 degrees. We, the opposite sides, we know that this is 60 kilometers per hour. This is alpha degrees. The opposite sides, we know that this is 18 kilometers per hour. So obviously, we're going to use our sine rule. So 18 over sine alpha is equal to 60 over sine 140 degrees, isn't it? So from here, we cross multiply, um, you know, from the calculator and everything else, you will get 
alpha is 11.1184 degrees. Okay, so this is our alpha, and therefore to find theta, okay, will be simply, all right, 360 degrees minus away 90 degrees minus further another 11.1184 degrees. So from here we'll get our theta value of 258.88 degrees. All right, so. This is it. This will be the bearing that the lifeboat will have to travel in order to intercept with the fishing boat. Okay, so we found the first part of the answer. Next one, we are su supposed to find the time taken for the interception to occur. So again, um, based on what we have seen in the first few examples, to find time is actually always uh, the distance divided by the speed. Okay, so again, like I said, um, you can actually do... Okay, go get the relative velocity, okay, the velocity of uh, the lifeboat relative to the fishing boat or the velocity of the fishing boat relative to the lifeboat and then we take the 40 kilometers, which is the relative distance divided by the relative speed, you will also get the time. Okay, but like I said, okay, there's no need to make things complicated because it's something that's quite difficult to see. Alright, we'll rather think easily, okay, think of it easily. All right, meaning to say, first of all, we must then know um, how far the lifeboat will have to travel in order to intercept with the fishing boat, isn't it? So we will go figure out the actual speed, sorry, the actual distance, I mean, okay? So the actual distance that the lifeboat have to, have to travel, okay? So will be given by this vector here, all right? So the actual distance that the lifeboat will have to travel, Okay, how do we get that? So we let the actual distance be x kilometers. Okay, and uh, how are we going to get the x kilometers? Well, we have to rely on the 40 kilometers, isn't it? Okay, bear in mind, we do not mix speed with distance. So if we are looking for distance, we have to use distance to help us find distance. So of course, 18 and 16 now will be totally useless. Okay, so from here... Okay, we looks like we're going to use our sine rule again, isn't it? Because we know that if we have x over sine 140 degrees is equal to 40 kilometers over sine, okay, this angle here. All right, so this angle here is actually quite easy to find because uh, we have this as 140, we have this alpha is 11. Point 1184. So this angle here from your calculator, you get 28. Point 8816 degrees. Okay, so this will be from your calculator. So if, uh, it will be useful for us because we need that for our sine rule 28.8816 degrees. So again, cross multiply. Okay, get our x. The x value will be 53.24 kilometers. Alright, so what does this 52.2? Uh, 53.24, excuse me, 53.24 kilometers mean. Well, this 53.24 kilometers is the distance that your lifeboat actually has to travel. Okay, so you know that the speed of the lifeboat is at 60, you know the actual speed is 60, you know the actual distance that he has to travel is 53.24, therefore, to find the time. Okay, it will be extremely easy. It will be just the actual distance divided by the actual speed of 60, isn't it? So that will give us the answer of um, 0 0.8873 hours. Okay, of course, uh, change that to minute. We will get, of course, 53.24 minutes back. Okay, I mean... I shouldn't have too much of a headache with this. Okay, all right. Here we go. I hope you are un you are okay with this. All right, you understand every single step, what we're doing and all. Now, some of um, you may ask, can I find the distance that the fishing boat has to travel instead? Okay, the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Okay, you can find um, the actual distance that the fishing boat will have to travel. Of course, then you have to divide by the actual speed of the fishing boat. Okay, so that will give us another uh, value for the distance instead of uh, 53.24. Okay, it will be something else when uh, divided by 18 
Okay, we will also give us the same answer. Okay, as to whether you can use the relative velocity, yes. Answer is also yes, as per what I told you earlier on. Yes, you can use the relative vector because uh, this is the relative distance. Okay, this um, will make will actually make things a little bit harder to understand because it's a lot easier to understand that uh, to find the time you use the actual distance, you have actual speed, you get the actual time, right? So to use the relative um, this distance and relative speed kind of thing it will be actually more difficult to visualize um, but of course okay we will actually talk about this okay more in a uh, lesson three right when we have to deal with an entirely different type of question okay so here we are with uh, example four